Hello and welcome. It is me, your cool uncle Marissa, and today we are going to talk about the Game Boy Advance. Yes, that's right. The Game Boy Advance, the original Game Boy Advance this time. I've done a few videos on the Game Boy Advance SP, uh, but now we're gonna go to the Game Boy Advance. Now the Game Boy Advance has a very special place in my heart because it is the first handheld console that I ever had. And the first console I had when I was cognizant of having one. When I was really little, my aunt bought us a Sega Mega Drive and it existed and I loved it, but you know, I wasn't old enough to really be cognizant that I owned a gaming console. The Game Boy Advance, I got a milky pink one as a gift. I hated it because pink is for girls. And I'm not a girly girl. I love pink now. Anyway, what we're going to talk about today is the display for the Game Boy Advance and specifically the Funny Playing ITA display. Now the Funny Playing ITA display is the bottom screen of a DSi put into the Game Boy Advance. My first reaction to this was, mm, what about yellowing? The DS is a wonderful line, but <laughs> bless its heart, it really has problems with yellowing straight out of the factory after a few years. There just doesn't seem to be a consensus as to what causes it. But rest assured, this is just the screen. And by virtue of that, there is no yellowing because we don't have that uh, touch layer top, which probably has a much better name than touch layer top. Now the screen on the DSi going into the Game Boy Advance looks Beautiful. Let's take a look. My reaction to the ITA screen and to any screen that achieves this look, it's what I felt the screen looked like as a kid. I don't know how this was the assumption, given now if I try to play on a stock display, I'm like, dude, I pay to see and I, I can't see. But you've got the lovely grid, you've got the lovely lines. It just, it, it's beautiful. The colors are good. Now what you just saw was the original ITA screen. And the folks at Funny Playing came out with, inevitably, the laminated version of the ITA screen. Now the difference between the laminated and the regular is not huge. It's laminated so you obviously don't have that gap between the screen and the lens, which I think is something that we are now spoiled for. It's it's one of those things which you don't notice exists until you notice it and then you notice it. But otherwise you can adjust where the screen is, which you do upon installation and that's it. It also has FRM as an on-screen display option. If you're playing a game which is super fast, for example, riding the bike on a Pokemon game, uh, it really helps with ghosting and things like that. Now I know some of you are gonna exit out of this video and you are going to say, Uncle Marissa, I've tried the ITA display. I've seen people who've tried the ITA display and it sucks. It flickers like nobody's business. And yes, it flickers. And this is something that uh, I think that both Funny Playing and any distributor does not make clear. The screen flickers you need to adjust the potentiometer on your game boy advance in order to set it where it stops flickering that's all it's it's easy to do ideally you can do this with the aging rom which has an lcd display option and i will show you how to do that in this tutorial if you don't have a rom you can just eyeball it just put in a game that you know has a nice uh, full field takes up your entire screen and just adjust the potentiometer until it works. The screen does flicker. You have to adjust it. It's part of the installation. I don't know why it's something that you have to dig for. This should be made clear and available on all websites where the ITA display is sold. So if you've installed it and you hate the flicker, you can skip to that part where I show you how to adjust the potentiometer. If you haven't ever experienced an ITA screen, let's go ahead and learn how to install it. Come on. First step is to remove the six 
tri-wing screws on the back as well as the black Phillips screw inside the battery compartment. Take the screws out and place them in a safe location or just dump them out like the caveman that I am and remove the back of the console. Remove the three screws on the motherboard with a small Phillips screwdriver. Now this is the first Game Boy I ever modded, so you might recognize a pretty old IPS screen that I'm going to be uninstalling. You may also notice on the right I have this little capacitor board that I don't remember what I got it for, but it doesn't work. And of course I'd purchase that from the store that shall neither be named nor frequented in this community as they are absolutely not a part of it. Now here we have the funny playing pre-trimmed shell for the laminated screens. You can see a lot of the elements have been cut out from the inside. Here are the kit contents. We have this plastic frame, the laminated screen and board, as well as two ribbon cables. One of these is for the 32 pin motherboard and the other is for the 40 pin. You can check to see which version you have. It will be printed right next to the connector for the ribbon cable. And if for some reason that's not there, it's just going to be whichever ribbon cable fits. You'll notice one side of the plastic frame has two indents. Those two indents are where the ribbon cables on the board behind the screen fit perfectly so that they don't get creased or damaged. Then we just sit the laminated screen into the front shell. Next, place the correct ribbon cable into the motherboard connector, followed by the connector on the screen. The kit also comes with a little bit of double-sided tape, which you can place behind that board to make sure that it's nice and snug against the screen. And then we can easily slip that ribbon cable into that connector. Next, we just have to solder a couple of points. The wires you need are included in the kit. For small jobs like this, I like to use my flux pen, but you can use any sort of flux you like. Then you can tin the L, R, and S pads on the ribbon cable and solder the wires on. Just a side note that if you are using a 40 pin motherboard, Funny Playing does recommend removing the C54 capacitor I then like to trim the wires so that, you know, you don't have a bunch of wires just loose in there. Trim them as taut as you can while still having some room for error. Now the solder points on your motherboard are Q1B, TP2, and TP8. Once everything is soldered, I like to secure the points with some capped on tape. It's also helpful to use some capped on tape to secure the wires along the way, just so they don't get snagged on anything. Then I'm just going to drop in my buttons and my membranes. And before I button everything up, I'm going to add some more capped on tape to that little board and the back of the screen for extra insulation. Okay, once all that's done, lift the board over and seat it. The hardest part to get in is the speaker. Once you get the speaker in, everything else sort of falls into place. And then we can put those three screws back in. I like to do a button check just to make sure that the tension between the board and the case is to my liking when it comes to how the buttons are seated. This goes without saying, test your screen before you solder anything and install it. But before I put the back on, I like to test one more time just to make sure. And on my list of things that are cheap and you ought to buy because they'll make your life so much easier, a battery case with alligator clips. Red clip goes on positive, black goes on negative, and that way 
you can do that final check without having to screw the back on. Everything looks good, so I'm going to put the back back on. Now we're going to pop in some batteries and we are going to use the aging ROM linked in the description below in order to adjust the potentiometer. Once you launch the aging ROM, you press and hold the L and R buttons and it'll take you to a menu. Select test program followed by LCD checker. Now, unless you're very lucky, you should see your screen flickering like mad. Now the potentiometer is located behind your Game Boy Advance sticker. So hopefully you haven't stuck that on yet. And it's right through that little hole. Ideally, you will use a flat head for this, not a Phillips like I am. And you just get it slotted in and just twist it until it stops flickering. Now you can see the brightness just popped up. That's because this installation does have a touch sensor. So when you touch the top of the Game Boy, it adjusts the brightness. And take your time with this. Something I've noticed is that when you remove the screwdriver, it ever so slightly twists the potentiometer and you have to adjust it again. So be very careful when you are removing the screwdriver so that doesn't happen. And it looks good. Then I'm going to go ahead and test it with a game just to make sure that there's no noticeable flicker in real life play. Now, before we get into it, let's take a look at the features. So you have 10 levels of brightness on this and you can adjust that using the on-screen display, which you bring up by pressing and holding select L and R and then navigating the brightness with L and R. You get rid of the OSD by pressing and holding the select button and you can navigate the options by pressing the select button. As you can see, you have FRM, you have the X axis and the Y axis that you can adjust. And honestly, you would probably just do this first thing when you install it and never again. And if you recall from our potentiometer adjustment, you can also adjust the brightness by tapping the top of the console where the touch module is. I'm not a big fan of that, but it's convenient. And now let's do a little gameplay demo. See if you can spot any differences between this and the non-laminated version that I showed earlier. Do you feel like you noticed any differences? Let's take a look side by side. There's no game playing, but they honestly look the same to me aside from the gap in the non-laminated. And I imagine you might notice something when using FRM. All right, we did it guys. We installed the laminated ITA screen from Funny Playing and it's beautiful. The pros and cons list, let's go through those. The pros. A laminated screen is beautiful. We, again, I said this in the beginning, we have been swell rotten by laminated screens. There's no dust, there's no gap. It's just perfect. The fact that we have the on-screen display to adjust where the screen sits is also wonderful. Having that minute ability to make that adjustment is fantastic. The addition of FRM in this version is fantastic. I honestly don't know what else to say. This is my favorite screen of all displays, all displays across the Game Boy line. Yes, even more so than the AGS 101. So I'm biased, but let's talk about the cons. The con that most personally affected me and broke my heart and I'm kind of a little sad about, I've installed laminated screens before in OEM Game Boy Color shells and the trim is pretty easy. Now this screen just came out, uh, so there isn't a trim guide and it is suggested that you use a specific shell. So I thought I'm gonna make a trim guide for you guys. Um, looking at the back of an OEM and the ITA shell, which I did purchase one to use as a template, it looks pretty straightforward. You guys might remember this, my um, custom Game Boy Advance shell that I made myself and love very much and it was my like 
daily driver. So I cut the back where things had to be uh, trimmed off. But here's the thing. The ITA shell relies on a bevel right here. And that's not something, nothing's impossible. The word itself says I'm possible, but it's not, it's not efficient. It's not something that it's going to uh, have a lot of precision. So yeah, I'm very sad because I can't use this anymore. That leads us to the more general con, I suppose, for folks who don't have a custom one to destroy is that uh, you have to use the very specific shell and the colors as of now at least are pretty limited. Um, for example, I won't be able to recreate this on a laminated ITA shell because they don't have a crystal clear shell. They only have a frosted clear shell. But luckily the one that we did work on, the back is the original from my IPS mod, but the front of the shell is the one that I had purchased from the pre-trimmed collection. The only other con, in my opinion, is the flicker issue, right? And the f this is not so much on the mod itself as it is on the web pages and storefronts and everything that sell this display. It doesn't clearly tell you that you need to adjust the potentiometer in order to get rid of the flickering. So most people are going to install it the same way they do an IPS screen or anything else and see the flickering and be pretty pissed off by that. So I wish that was something that was uh, more well known. And the fact that you have to do it, it's definitely an extra step, especially if you don't have a flashcard and have to eyeball it. But you know what I think about all of this? Sometimes as retro gamers, especially, we are so obsessed with achieving that perfect look. You know, it even comes into play with CRTs, like my CRT is RGB modded. And if you go to uh, CRT communities, there's this obsession with like the perfect geometry. Like just play your game. As long as it's not, <laughs> as long as it doesn't look like it's that awful that it's going to distract you, if you obsess over the minutia, you're never gonna actually play your game. So, you know, put in a game that, like I said earlier in the intro, fills the screen and adjust the potentiometer until you can't notice the flickering anymore. And if you can't notice it, this is your Game Boy, okay? So, and then one day maybe you'll get a flashcard and you can tune it to precision, but, so that's really the only cons for me. But this display is my one true love, so I am very biased. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, there are IPS screens for the Game Boy Advance that have retro pixel effects, so you have to really be wanting to go to a specific look for this. I'm fully aware that this is not the most popular display. I made a Game Boy Advance for my friend a few months ago and I was like, so there's this IPS and then there's this really, really wonderful ITA display. Just look at it. She's like, no, I, I, I want the IPS. Um, thank you so much as always for watching and I hope you are having a wonderful day as well and I'll see you in the next one.